Liam Neeson's portrayal of Hannibal was based much more on a character like Lee Marvin. This mission is like over, mission. Lieutenant. I clear our names. We find Pike in the plates. No matter what. Well, Hannibal's a real soldier, and he's wed to this team of brothers, you know? And operates kind of outside of uh, army law and government law, as one does in these movies. Don't you on the same dirt? I am, unfortunately, down here in lovely Mexico. What have you got for me? I got fast air organized, uh, call sign is hatchet, That's it. and that is whatever you want it to be. Okay. This is yours. Is I will only remind you, this guy's I know. ranking Mexican army. I know. He's a general, he's dirty as sin. Just keep that in mind. Sure. I always looked at it in this weird way, like Don Corleone and his three sons. Liam very much emerges as the paternal figure, whereas I think in the show, it was much more like these four guys who really loved each other, and Hannibal was the leader, but he wasn't there. He wasn't like the father figure. He wasn't the guy that they're worried about pissing off or letting down. How many years have you known me? Too many. That's how many times I've saved your ass. Oh well, that hurt. You know that hurts emotionally. The other three boys are are absolutely chalk and cheese as regards their their characters. There's flare-ups between them, and there's inevitably in every scene there's some sort of clash of personalities, but there's a mutual respect and bond there, you know? There he is! Damn, man! Where's my heart? You get no hug! You didn't! At least you weren't out there! I only know who your ass because y'all had wrecked me! I can't oh. never be! Oh, I can't even remember being pissed off me! I can't even talk! I'm so damn pissed, I can't even talk! Liam has that natural quality. He's got two sons. It's like he just understands how to play that. He's not a far cry from a lot of those colonels and a lot of what these guys do and how they operate and how they move through the world. And in that way, I think it's it's a it's a it's a reasonably large departure from the way Papar played Animal. There's a plan in everything, kid. And I love it when a plan comes together. In the TV series, Mr. Papar, George Papar had always had a stogie in his mouth. I was never a cigar smoker, um, but if you're going to do it, you have to do it right, you know? They got me these uh, Cuban cigars, which are reputed to be the best in the world. And uh, it does add something to Hannibal, a contentment when a plan's going well. There's a feeling of oneness with the world when, when he <laughs> lights that match that I totally uh, empathize with. You and those boys have possibly been the most valuable military asset I have ever had at my disposal. We throw the word gravitas around all the time, but that's a guy who earns it, Liam. We've made it a lot more edgier, but still kept a great texture of fun and true A-team cinematic form. Uh, let's go hot on weapons, please. Face um, loves what he does, loves to run a gun big weapons specialist, M4 weapons. I only say that because I love the M4, <laughs> so I'm pretending he does. <laughs> it's really only because I've become completely obsessed with uh, the training we've been doing. So basically just anything I like, face likes. <laughs> Bradley got very, very, very interested in uh, the M4 Bushmaster. He got really good at it. Uh, Comes with the basic 30 round magazine, a full auto capability. 30 rounds, if you were to hold the trigger down, will last you about three and a half seconds. It has a collapsible butt stock, and then we attach it also with a sling that we mount on the side of face. How'd it work? It worked, it worked it great, dude. Do it again. Just right. you know, I want more gack, more shit flying, more shit, more shit, right, more debris. Joe really wants us to know what we're doing so that he can basically shoot a scene and not have to do quick cuts to make up for the fact that the actors don't know what they're doing. Watching him in the movie then, and how much he was training, it was, it was remarkable, man, remarkable, and how, like he was like precision with that thing. Suck on that, Carnahan. Every type of movement you see the actors do is all instinctive because it's been drilled in them so much through the hours of training that it should be instinctive. Our trainer has broken it down to basically the bare essentials from we walk into a room and see a gun in front of us and go from that step of even how to approach that gun to running an M4 machine gun with a Glock strapped to your leg 
with a combat round of ammunition, which is 300 rounds of ammunition, being able to take that into a field situation and deal with any sort of malfunction with your gun and continue to pursue your target. Three, two, one, action! <laughs> very capable of changing magazines and switching from his main weapon, which is his M4, right to his handguns. He's done some very quick mag changes, some of the quickest I've seen on camera. We had a shot in the film where he was able to, from a, essentially a leaning position, he was strapped to the side of this uh, container, and from the, from the leaning position, fire, reload, and resume firing in under four seconds, which shatters the old Val Kilmer heat moment where he, where he reloads behind the car blows out of the water. Of all the stuff we took out of the movie, that might have been the one that broke Bradley's heart the most. And that's because Joe wants it to look real. And if you can accomplish that, it reads on camera. You can't fake it well. At any point in that movie when he's handling a gun, watch his hands. He looks like a guy who's been shooting his entire life. I have bruises all over my body, my hands, and so you realize that the wrist strength that's ne necessary to be able to run those guns. But it's awesome. It's like being a kid, being able to do that. Shoot blanks, you know, it's amazing. He's having a lot of fun while he's doing it. It's hard for him not to smile while he's firing the weapon. <laughs> I'm become like a gearhead with the military um, paraphernalia. Yeah. I think to this day, we're still trying to get him the M4, a good one. Because he, he's, he's not, he won't take the like the $800 version that you can get a big five. He wants like the, <laughs> he wants one that's been through the sand in Afghanistan. So one day, Bradley, one day, we'll get you that gun. I forgot to like this motherfucker. <laughs> hey, dude, when you throw it, brother, really throw it. Don't like you throw a baseball. Like People come to me and say, hey, I heard you the new Mr. T. I'm like, dude, man, I'm not a new Mr. T. Can't nobody be Mr. T but Mr. T, you know what I'm saying? I don't know you're all good, boss. You say what? <laughs> what is that? I know this is my first big thing, and you know, I'm. I'm breaking out into acting and stuff, so I'm learning a whole lot. So I just, I'm just keep learning. I see this as a big learning experience. Dog, this is this is my first rodeo, <laughs> and I, right now I'm about to be the clown. These things are those containers hitting right by you. Today I got to dodge fake stuff. Good. Now you have to back, back that up so you're landing on that. What the fuck? How the hell? How the hell? I don't know where the fuck I land when I'm rolling around this motherfucker like. Remember, don't crash into that thing. They can only go so fast, okay? Y'all need to get the hell up out of my way today, man. I'm freight train, baby. Right. I'm moving. Hey. This is the most training I've done since I did this damn movie. I gained 10 pounds. <laughs> Here's what Rampage is training up at this point. Hey, what's in craft service? <laughs> I had to train myself. Stop laughing, stop laughing. I had to smack myself, beat myself up so I get serious, you know? The hard part is trying not to laugh, man. That's the hard part. Again. I love when you're like, tell me you can say some stupid uh, shit. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, these guys are just so funny, and, and sometimes they're just improv. And you know, so I'm used to what the scripts say, right? Sorry, right, PA. <laughs> <laughs> Buy yourself some toast, boy. Buy yourself some Yeah, I need to get me a new yeah, band. You couldn't get no better cast than Liam, Bradley, and Shouto. And I'll tell you what, Chateau is a perfect Murdoch. I am Prince Boffa, I am the advisor to the king, and we are here at United Nations to present our case. What do we don't have this thing called This is the United Nations, okay? Right. Where's our this. translation? Where's our translation? Sorry, this is not United Nations. I can't understand you. It's speaking Spanish. Forget United Nations, king. This is, we go home. On the first day, Rampage said to me that I should, um, he said, are you going to apply for citizenship? Because then we'll be the only two African-Americans on the, on the A-team. <laughs> Ramsey is demonstrating how you actually get out of cuffs. This is how you get out of cuffs. Well, how you get them to the front of your body. Right? Uh, uh, 
I swear I've done this before. <laughs> sure, man. Yeah, okay. I swear. No, I believe you. I believe you. So, so I swear. I've seen it on YouTube or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he just got me stuck and he walks away. <laughs> for me, I'm just like a big kid right now because it's just so fun for me to be playing a, a character who I looked up to so many years. You know, it's just like a blessing. I got this. Oh, no. this is what I, oh. <laughs> they take the tattoo off here, put it over here, cover up the tattoo in here. They, they chose my wardrobe and chose everything. It took them a couple hours to see which Mohawk they wanted and uh, they finally chose the, the one they liked and uh, it, it was cool, you know. This is actually the first time that I'm wearing my mohawk for real. And I, I so, like this, this look on you, you uh, Rampage. I think, right, so yeah, you, I think you can use it, you know, for again. going in the ring and if you're going to fight someone, you oh, oh. You miss with the macho lady. <laughs> this guy too funny. <laughs> Let's force Rampage at 5 in the morning, we don't eat until 10. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice! Nice! <laughs> I tried it! I tried to hold you! You're laughing! I tried to hold it! I tried to hold it! What is wrong with you? I tried to hold it! From the beginning. Okay. So, okay, no, let's, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's do that. So A-Team was my favorite show. My parents didn't let me watch it because it was too violent for the first year. So I was 11 years old when it came out. Okay, that's, that's drilling. We're gonna stop that. I'm gonna use my new Hollywood power to get that stopped. I do all my own stunts. And uh, I also did the way I'm trying to start the car battery and I do a somersault and I land on the bottom. I did that as well. Great. Uh, yeah, I guess he did do it. And then we just had his double on standby. We got him a little dirty and we just made it look like he actually did it. Could I have a stunt guy to do? This is high, man. I mean, I could hurt myself. It's beyond high maintenance, man. It's prima donna. Just hold it there. Hold it. <laughs> Press. So that's it. Do you see my, my stand? Yes. He doesn't really look like me. He looks like David Duchovny from X Files. Look, that, that was he, that was Duke Duchovny standing too. I asked I asked specifically for. Uh, but why? Jimmer, he ready. doesn't look like him. Did you see District uh, Nine? Did you see my film? Um, actually, I haven't. But yeah. I heard you were amazing in it. I heard it was great. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Charlto, he's a madman. When I saw District Nine, I thought he's a great guy. You see? Did you spell? You see this? Is my name is spelled wrong? You just check this. I haven't even noticed see that? it's on there. Look at that. It's it's R L T O N. Oh, yeah. Let's actually just take it just take it right off yeah. right now. Yeah. I mean that's yeah. just But now he's turned into this uncontrollable person. People say I'm being difficult. Bradley, look how perfectly Bradley's is spelled. Bradley Cooper. Bradley Cooper has managed to kiss every girl on the movie where there was no kiss in the script. I was just wondering, you know, if there may be murder, couldn't Bradley do the kiss? Uh, you know, because, I mean, no, I don't know, it's just... Oh, uh, right here. <laughs> I don't get to kiss anything. This is what I get. I, I love District 9, and I was so excited to meet him. And then, you know, things started disappearing in my trailer. My space heater was gone. Then my Ugg boots were gone. It's like a show. My Ugg boots are pink. He's a nice enough guy, but massive ego. What mic is this that you have? This is a Sankin. Okay. Wireless okay. lab, is that all right with yeah, you? Yeah, that's fine. Oh, fuck, your hands are, your hands are freezing now. So can you just warm? I come from a warm country. This is a fucking freezing country. It's freezing cold outside. Go, go. Ah, fuck, okay, no, 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 fuck. It's culturally insensitive what she's doing. And do you listen on, on, on to this? Oh, like, no, I we mean, don't listen at all. Right. Because I saw that fucking Christian Bale thing. Wait, did you work on, on Terminator? I don't know if this whole on shelter, movie thing. the camera. On shelter, I point the camera. He's just become like a disaster animal. It just, it's just exceptionally bright light. I mean, that's like the sun coming in there. You know, and then as we look at I mean, I'm squinting. It just feels like you wouldn't squint in a courtroom, you know? He's becoming a monster. I'm not trying to say how you should do your job. Yeah, look at this way. No squint, right? Yeah. Check what happens when I do that. He won't uh, shut up when he goes to his spot. He won't take his mark. Well, I'll teach you a trick. 
Yeah. Look into the light with your eyes closed like this. Are you serious? Yeah. He improvs all the time. Never listens to anybody. Yeah, and then... Okay, just keep looking at it. Yeah. Three minutes, though. Dude, I don't have three minutes. How's that? It just burnt... It just fucking burnt my your eyes, Your tie is man. completely no, fucked it just, up. No, it just fucking burnt my eyes, man. I, just light it however you want. It's really not a problem. Just whatever you think, you know. One movie in the States, see what happens. Look at all these people. There's obviously a reason why What's that? What's that people there? have vests. We should get a vest, Evan. You know, there we go. Fucking crews walking around with fucking vests on. What if, what if fucking container falls on my head, man? What the fuck then, huh? I hear you. Do you want me to sign, do you want me to sign that one of me? Mm, no, it's okay. No, seriously, I will, I will sign it. That's okay. <laughs> you you meant by warming my hands up? No, that's ice. <laughs> that's not, that's not good. When you hear actors going, I did all my own stunts. They're lying. Hello? How was that? Good. This is Sosa. Yep. Right, okay, this story is so convoluted. So <laughs> let me see if I can get through this. Jesse's part of the uh... DCIS, which is Defense Criminal Investigation Services. I can't believe I said that right. And my job is I have to basically police the A-team. And she's just convinced these guys are bad news and, and uh, outlaws, and they're just out there for the, you know, for the payday. Chris, uh, come on, you know we're innocent. I'm here because we didn't do this. I'm here because we were set up. I'm here because in the end, the truth is worth the risk. Joe's pitch to me was was more kind of centered around my character and what I was going to be doing in the film. And he basically said, we want to create this amazing female character who is not like, you know, the quote unquote tough cop-like character, which can sometimes be, I think, really hard to get that right balance of femininity and also strength, and it can come off really scary. She and I had kind of had the same feeling about we can't go butch. We can't do the whole chick with the dick thing. Forgive me for, uh... Yeah, is that the penile one? But it, we can't do that. You know, she had to be able to laugh and kind of take the piss and try to ground it in as much reality as you could. You know, we want to make this person have a great sense of humor. She's got to be cool. She's got to be with it. She's literally got to be kind of like a member of the A-team, even though she's kind of against them. What are you doing in, uh, in lovely Frankfurt, Fraulein? Oh, well, I'm just here to arrest you and your little team. We got lucky because she and Bradley have great chemistry. Great chemistry. It's one of those things where you really hit the ground running. You're lying and don't call me baby. You're the one who always wanted me to call you baby. Don't you remember that whole fetish thing with the diaper and the binky? I'm just going off of past experience. Oh, suck it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's right. That was the next thing you'd always say. Yeah. Baby, okay, suck it. <laughs> a ask him. No, no, listen, listen. Ask that guy if he likes bratwurst. Get him. Get him. He's, he's moving. Das Vagin to bratwurst. God. <laughs> You're such an idiot. Just bring that pretty head home. I don't want to bullet through it. You're lying. Okay, I do want to bullet through it, but that's just my shit. God. <laughs> Sosa and Face had a fling, had some sort of a relationship and that ended not in necessarily the best of ways. Oh, we were doing something else. What were we doing? Do you, you remember what it was we were doing? It was, it was in a bedroom. You don't remember? The only thing I remember is leaving. Which is my fondest memory of you. And they have this ongoing ex-lover struggle that I hope is really fun to watch. Oh, I'm gonna find you, face. That didn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> Go back to one. Her character is so vital to the plot, and you have to believe that that these get people have passed together, you know, and that there's this shit that's unresolved and all that stuff. 
Face is kind of a bullshit artist, um, but he's charming and he's incredibly smart and incredibly skilled and talented in what he does. He's just pushing her buttons through this whole movie, which is so interesting and fun, that kind of sparring dynamic between the two. Stop, 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 stop. Face, your girlfriend's back. Maury and Terry play Ravage and Gammons, my muscle, and they're hilarious. We are the, the B team, as we've decided to call ourselves, uh, for obvious reasons. Are, uh, B, B standing for bitch team. Yeah, the bitch team. We are Jessica Biel's bitches. The great thing about their characters is, I mean, they're very scary and intimidating, but what Joe's doing with them, which I think is brilliant, is really letting them be two guys, you know, riffing off each other. Warren, what do you think about the A-Team? Who's the A-Team? You're fired. That's your best you've done yet on this film. Still going? It's too bad it's not in the movie. Kurt, get in the Kurt, car. Get in the car. Get in the car, Get in the car, dude. Kurt. There's room. That's not Kurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's really made their characters so real. Instead of just two goons just standing there, you know, looking tough, they're really able to, to show off their personalities and show that these people who do these jobs are not people with sticks up their asses. <laughs> it's about how we feel about our work. <laughs> oh, sorry. You were talking. Go. I'm listening. Go. No, no, I'm done. I got, I got through it. I, I'm just looking at this experience as a really great opportunity to pay homage to whatever the fans who saw the show used to love about it. But then bring a really cool, gritty, Carnahan humor feel to this new version of it. Jesse's understood, okay, this is my role in this film, but also try to go above and beyond what you'd seen other people do in roles similar to this one. Captain. Yes, sir. Good work. Thank you, sir. I think I expected a little bit more of you know, voice club film, rah-rah, let's blow some shit up kind of a movie. And it's got a lot of that, but there's so much more depth than, than I ever imagined. I'm so sorry.